Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you to today's Bible study. It's our digging deep time. We give glory to God, the Almighty, the All-Sufficient King. I want us to pray before we start the study. Excellent King, eternal rock of ages, creator of heaven and earth, the one that woke us up this morning, the one that did not switch off his oxygen tap. That's why we are still counted worthy to be amongst the living. The one that spared our lives to remain alive in the midst of deaths going on all over the world. Father, we thank you this evening and we say, Hallowed be your holy name. We come unto you with thanksgiving, with appreciation. Father, Lord, we are grateful for the salvation of our souls, that we are among those counted worthy to know your holy name. Lord, we are grateful. And tonight, Father, Lord, as we have come to study at your feet, move mightily in our lives. Move like never before in our midst, O God. Teach us something new today that we've never learned. And at the end, let all glory be yours, O God. Fight all our seen and unseen battles. All our known and unknown failures, Father Lord, turn them to success. And King of glory, let your Holy Spirit be upon us tonight to interpret the word for us. For we are mere vessel, O oh God. I am a mere vessel, Lord, in your hand tonight. We are mere humans, O oh God. We cannot understand the spiritual things except to give us a spiritual interpretation. Move mightily in our midst, O oh God. And blessed Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come and breathe afresh upon us. Give us knowledge and understanding of the word of God tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you to tonight's Bible study. Tonight I'll be sharing with you what I titled the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. The efficacy of the blood of Jesus. How effective is this blood of Jesus? What does it do for all of us? I'll be taking us through five areas that we need to know how great the blood of Jesus can work in our lives tonight. And our anchor verses will be taken from Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. And I will read from verse 1 and verse 4. Hebrews 10 verses 1 and verse 4. Now verse 1 says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas thereon to perfect. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. What is this? Uh, this verse is talking about today. Now the law was given after Adam and Eve fell short of the glory of God in the Garden of Eden. And man fell because Adam and Eve sinned against God. And when they fell, there was need for redemption of mankind. Now, why was sacrifice necessary? Because the Bible says, from where we have just read, that this were done with the blood of bulls and goats. And it says it was not possible for this blood to take away the sins of man. It was just an appease, appeasing, you know, to God, oh, help us. Every year they keep doing this thing, year in, year out. But there was no positive result. Hallelujah. But today I have good news for you that blood was shed once and for all and man stands out this thing today. 
please patiently follow me. Don't sign out while we are not yet done. May God give you the grace to be patient today in the name of Jesus. I assure you will learn something new, something unique, something that will turn around your life positively in the mighty name of Jesus. Now going next to the next uh, issue, what does blood stand for? Blood represents life. And so the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and purifies and gives us new life from the old life of Adam and Eve, which was the life of sin. Now the power of the blood of Jesus has provided everything that we need. You and I need to live a victorious life. And therefore, our battle is from a victory standpoint. Praise the Lord. Today, like I said, I'll be looking at five ways that the blood of Jesus is effective in our lives as Christians. Number one is that through the blood, we have redemption in Christ Jesus. Through his blood, there is redemption of our souls. And number two, through the blood, we have access. Access to the kingdom of God. We have access to the holy of holiest. In the past, the priests have to sanctify themselves and then they remain in the second sanctuary. And they remain there while the chief priest will go into the Holy of Holiest to go and sacrifice and appeal for the sins of the congregation of the Israelites. And usually they tie him bell with a long rope. If he goes in there, nobody's sure whether he will leave or he will come back alive. That was the risk that the high priest in those days were passing through. Some came out alive, some did not. But to the glory of God, that changed when Jesus came. He now gave us free access into the Holy of Holies by tearing the veil, which was his very flesh, to make sure that you and I have access to that place. Praise the Lord. Now, number three point is, by the blood of Jesus, we have authority over principalities and powers. That blood gives you authority to stay above principalities and powers. Praise the Lord. Number four point is that through the blood we receive power to heal and to perform miracles. That's why when you pray for somebody, the person gets healed and gets well. A sick person gets well, a barren becomes fruitful, you know, a bound person becomes delivered and so many other, you know, miracles that God has empowered us to do through the blood of Jesus. Now, number five, through the same blood, we have fellowship with the Father. All of these, I will be discussing them in details with you tonight. So please pay great attention. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, that we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. I hope you're hearing me. Ephesians 1, 7. We have redemption through the blood of Jesus. We have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace through his blood. Praise the Lord. So you and I that have been condemned to die have suddenly found a way out to be redeemed and saved of God. Why did man now need redemption? Romans chapter five, Romans five. Why do you and I need redemption? Because the blood of Jesus can redeem you. Why do you need it? The Bible says in Romans chapter five, verse 14, wherefore, verse 12 and 14, I'm reading first, and then I'll read 18 and 19 later. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 3.23. All of us, you and I, have sinned. We have lived in sin in the past. And the wages of sin, according to Romans 6.23, Romans 6.23 is what? Death. Praise the Lord. So because you and I have committed a sin, we have to pay the penalty, and that penalty is sin. Praise the Lord. Now let's see what Romans 5.14 says. The Bible says, nevertheless, 
This dead rain from Adam up to Moses. Don't forget our anchor verse that it was the law was a shadow of things of the true things that was to come through the blood of Jesus. That's what we read as our anchor verse this um, this evening. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, 1 and 4. Don't forget that. Now the Bible says, This dead reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not seen. Praise the Lord. You were not there to sin. But because you were made in the similitude, in the image of Adam. Hallelujah. Transgression, that is the figure of him that was to come. Because you had, Adam had sinned, automatically you become a sinner. Because you were born in that lineage and similitude. Praise the Lord. Now Romans 5.18 says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, all, resulting in condemnation. Even so, hallelujah, that's the good news. Through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in the justification of life. Now, one man sinned, and the result was death. That was the result and effect of that sin. And all of us that came in in the lineage of Adam are guilty or are scheduled for death. But Jesus came in his righteousness and performed one righteous act of dying at the cross of Calvary and it results in the justification of our life. And so if you have been a sinner, like I and many or all of us here, you have committed several sins. But when you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, it becomes effective to redeem your soul from that sin of death. Praise the Lord. Now Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Hallelujah. Christ came that he may make you, justify you to make you righteous. Hallelujah. Now we go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 1 and, and 4 that I read. For the law was what a shadow of good things to come. Okay, you've committed sin, Adam and Eve and all the generation until Moses. And God said, okay, Moses make laws. I'll give you some laws they have to. Sorry, Moses did not make law. God gave him laws and said, implement it amongst the children of Israel. And they used to call it the Ten Laws Commandments of Moses. Actually, God gave it to them. I mean, gave them to him. And so these laws started to be implemented. And it was what a shadow of the good things to come. It was what God was making man to come. But man became very stiff-necked and could not abide by the laws. And so Jesus came. And when he came, he said he didn't come to abolish these laws, but he came to group it into two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy might and with all thy mind. And love thy neighbor as thyself. Two laws. Praise the Lord. And so because of this law that was a shadow of good things to come, it wasn't actually the very image of the things. And so those sacrifices which were offered annually could not perfect man. And so in verse 4, the Bible says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. It was not possible. Praise the Lord. Amen. And now when we get down to verse 12 of the same Hebrews 10, the Bible says, But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, underline that word forever in your Bible, he sat down at the right hand of God. And what did he say? It is finished. John 19.30. It is finished. I have completed the work of salvation. You are justified for life. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we go down to John 17.4, the Bible says he now, you know, 
he, he gave a commendation to God and said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He had completed the work. He has finished the work of salvation. And he has justified you and I back to God. And he, he took back his report card and went to God and said, God, I have glorified your name on earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. When we look back at verse 13 of that Hebrew chapter 10, from that time, he said, he is waiting till all his enemies are made his footstool. Hallelujah. So you're going to see how the blood of Jesus can empower you when, once you are justified to pull down principalities and powers and to become fearless because the lion of the tribe of Judah is on your side. Amen. Now, verse 10 of that same Hebrews 10, it says that you and I are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ that was done once and for all. That sacrifice was once and for all. The children of God don't need to gather again annually to go and sacrifice and do the sin offering and do this offering and pour incense and cry unto God. No, God has completed that work through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you and I, all you need to do is to open your heart and he will come in because we are eternally separated to God by the blood of Jesus. If we continue in our faith until he returns or until the Lord calls us home. I am not preaching once saved, forever saved. No, that's the heresy and it's a wrong doctrine. But I'm preaching that you are eternally separated to God as long as you continue to walk in the faith and wait for the appearing of God and wait for his return. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now in verse 15 of the same Hebrews 10, I want us to look at that, analyze it, and see how how these rights have been given unto us so that the devil will not cheat you and I any further. Verse 15 says, Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he, the Holy Spirit, has said before. Verse 16, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I would put my laws onto their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Praise the Lord. So the law was, is no longer the law you carry in tablets and be looking and say, oh, law one said this, law two said this. No. The law, the Bible says, he has written it now in your heart. It is written here on your mind, and he has put it inside your heart. What is this telling us? It is an indication that genuine repentance and justification is possible. Praise the Lord. That's why I can call you my brother, I can call you my sister. We are not from the same race, we are not from the same tribe, but because we share in the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus, which binds us up because the Bible calls it the blood covenant. I'm not talking about the worldly blood that they go into cults and they cut their skin and they lick their blood and they do all kinds of that. No. The blood of Jesus comes by accepting him into your life as your Lord and Savior. And thereafter, he comes in to dwell and he does what? He puts his laws in your heart. He writes them on your minds. So you can't be thinking negative. How am I going to kill somebody? How am I going to poison somebody? Oh, I hate you, or I don't like you, or I cannot forgive you. No. Praise the Lord. Because the law is in your heart. Now, the good news follows in verse 17. The Bible says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Don't let anybody cheat you. By telling you, oh, you are the worst sinner. Oh, there is no hope for you. There is hope for you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, your sins and your iniquities, God will remember them no more. As long as you don't go back to them. The prodigal son misbehaved once. 
When he returned, he never went back. So if you have been a prodigal son, roaming from pillar to pole, committing all kinds of sins and adultery, the Lord said, come back home. And when you come back, I will not remember those evil that you have done. Now this is the core of the matter. And this is the totality of the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. The complete blotting away of your sin. The Bible says he blots them away he, as if you never committed any of those sins. Don't let anybody deceive you, my brother and my sister. There is no place for purgatory. The Bible says after death is what? Judgment. So there is no middle way. Either you repent now and live truly to God or you repent or you continue in sin and go to hell. And there is no neutral place. Oh, say, okay, even if I don't want to follow them, I don't want to go to their heaven. Okay, you will go to hell. There is no neutral place. And there is no place you say, okay, let me go and change. Mm -mm. The Bible says there will be a time that there will be scarcity, the famine for the word of God. Now the word of God is preached freely. You are hearing me all over the net, every online people are preaching. There will be a time that you will be looking for who to share the word of God with you and you will not find. And that time is very close because we can see from the activities of the world today that evil has increased on our, in our world, on our earth. But God says he sits at the center of the earth. He's watching everything and nothing can bypass him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're excited this evening. I am really excited tonight to know that I have this leverage and this liberty, this opportunity that I'm not going to miss tonight. It explains that no matter how bad you have been, that the moment you receive Christ into your life, you begin to enjoy love and forgiveness and his blessings and all his covenants. This is the promise that you can have as a child of God. Praise the Lord. Now, this explains something that when God decides to forget your sins and iniquities, he is simply saying three things. What is that thing? Number one thing is, oh, I love you, and I have forgiven you. And number two thing is, my spirit of grace is available for you. So you begin to enjoy the mercies of God in and out of your life. And then number three, the Holy Spirit remains as a witness, fulfilling God's promises and covenants in your life. God is telling you, let us start afresh. Let us do what? Start afresh. Let's look at Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. Psalm 51, 16 and 17. The Bible says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Verse 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. God is no longer interested in sacrifice. Oh, let us kill cow and shed blood. And No, 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 no. God is not. That age has passed. That was before Jesus came. Now, as long as Jesus is here, he said he wants your spirit broken before him. Are you telling God, I'm sorry for all that I've done? Are you turning back from the evil you've done in the past? Are you repenting of the wicked things you've done in the past? And said, God, I'm sorry. The Bible says, a contract, a broken heart, God will not despise. God is here tonight to hear you, if only you are willing to turn over to him. There's a song that a songwriter writes, turn it over to Jesus and you will smile the rest of your life. I am smiling because I've decided to turn over everything to Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm praying that God will turn everything in your favor and then you will begin to smile again and again. Praise the Lord. Now, the grace, the spirit of grace, is the overflow of God's spirit of love. According to Hosea 6.6, 6, Hosea 6.6, 6, the Bible says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. God is looking for what? He's looking for mercy, 
He wants to show you mercy, not sacrifice, not burnt offerings. He's looking for those that have the knowledge of him as God that is all and all. Praise the Lord. The, the, the Holy Spirit is a seal of God's promise for our inheritance. That seals it, the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 1, verse 3, he says, God the Father has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. He has blessed us with every of spiritual blessing that we can imagine or think of. In Jesus' name. Amen. And verse 4 says, He has chosen us. I'm still reading Ephesians chapter 1. Please follow me. He had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. That's why he came. He had chosen you and I. He desires you and I to be blameless and to be holy. God is coming back for a church that is without spots or wrinkle. He's not coming back for a 99.9% .9 purity or pure Christian. I say, ah, mommy, that's not possible. It is possible to be 100% pure. God is coming back for a church that is ready. The people that are holy, the people that are blameless without spots or wrinkle. Are you in that number? In verse 5, he says, In love he has predestined us to be called his children by adoption through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because we were far away. But God called us, my children. John 1, 12 says, For as many as received him, he gave them what power to become what? Sons and daughters of God. Are you there? Are you ready to receive Christ tonight? Are you ready to be adopted into this holy family? Full of promises and good things. And verse 6. See reading Ephesians 1. The Bible says, To the praise of his glorious grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved you have been taken into a glorious grace. You have been accepted in the beloved Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why he is called our firstborn. That is why he is the heir of the kingdom of God. And we have been called joint heirs with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in verse 7, the Bible says, In Christ we have redemption. How? Through his blood. This is the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. And the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. God is rich in grace and mercy. Are you willing to receive and partake in this glorious wealth of God that he's offering you today? Are you ready to be redeemed with the blood of Jesus? Let's see what Ephesians 2.19 says. Ephesians 2.19, the Bible says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, hallelujah, Amen. but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Wow. If you are living in a foreign land, you know what it means to be a foreigner. You don't have equal rights with the citizens. There are some jobs you cannot do. If at all, you can do any job. There are some places you cannot go because you are not allowed. There are boundaries. There are restrictions. Many of us that are living outside the country, we know. But the good news is that Jesus has paid with his blood that no more you are no more stranger to God hallelujah and you are no longer a stranger to the household of God that means when God is sitting on the high table in the head, you can sit and dine with him that is why we take holy communion we dine with the king of kings and the lord of lords praise the lord 
So this is a promotion for you and I. And I feel good that I'm promoted to this level to be able to sit with the king of kings. I can imagine when the king of a nation invites you, you know, for dinner, how you will dress, how you will be excited. Oh, if the king of Jordan invites us, I know we'll be making all arrangements. In fact, one week we'll be preparing what we'll wear, how we will walk, how we will talk. Praise the Lord. But today the king of all kings is inviting you into his household to become a member, a fellow citizen of the kingdom of God. I don't know how excited you are. I am really excited. Praise the Lord. We are going to, in the remaining few minutes we have, look at the five things that the blood of Jesus has effectively done for us. What are those five things? We have talked about at length the redemption through his blood. We have talked at length about the forgiveness of our sins. We have talked at length that God desires to plant his word in our hearts. We have talked that he has now made us fellow citizens of his kingdom and members of his household. We are going to look at these five things that the blood of Jesus has done for us. And so you have to decide on what you yourself want to do with it. Number one, we have spoken, and I see repeat again, that through the blood we have redemption in Christ Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus we have what? Redemption. We are redeemed of the Lord. Gloriously redeemed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see what 1 John 1, 9 says. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. What does it say? The Bible says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ooh. Four things involved there. Number one, you have to confess with your mouth. And then God will show forth his faithfulness in forgiving you your sins. And not just forgiving you your sins, he's going to cleanse you. Not just cleansing you from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so it is left for you and I today to decide. Am I ready? Am I convicted in my heart that God desires good things for me? That God thought about me are thoughts of good and not of evil? That he desires to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness? The Bible says, if we confess... Are you ready to confess your sins? God indeed is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. Yeah. Acts 4, 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, none other name, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's one name, the name that is more powerful than every other name, the name at the mention of which every knee bows. That name is the name of Jesus. That is the only name that can give you salvation. That is the only name that can deliver you from evil. That is the only name that gives you hope of eternity. That is the only name through which you can open the doors and the gates of heaven and go in. That is the only name. Dearly beloved, this nailed the point. No other name. There is no salvation in any other Every other died and never resurrected. He died and went and took the keys of hell and death from the devil. And then he made an open show of him, triumphing over him. Hallelujah. He gave us, he gave us victory and triumph by that singular act. Many of us today are baptized with water. We are deep down identifying ourselves as those that have been dead to sin and then being brought up again having manifested the power of living a second life. I don't know about you, but I feel excited tonight that there is hope for me as a sinner in the past. I don't know about you, if there is hope for you and you are still continuing in sin, 
Remember the Bible says, shall you continue in sin that grace may abound? Say, God forbid. Stop sinning if you are still sinning. The signs of the world are obvious. We have never seen fire tornadoes. Today we are seeing it. We have never seen a pandemic that is global. Today we are seeing it. We have never seen some things that are happening. Men shall be lovers of themselves. Men, there will be rumors of wars and all these are happening in our time. Dearly beloved, how prepared are you? There is availability and hope for you today. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Are you ready to receive this great grace? Great grace. It takes your faith to believe that God can save you. The Bible calls it gifts. Do you want to neglect a gift so high? so precious so good god is giving you this gift tonight don't refuse him because you will be accountable to your life at his return the bible says this grace to save is not by works lest any man should boast it's not by good works it's not by how much you have done no it is a free gift from god Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. You can only do good works when Christ is in you, and that good works will genuinely manifest the glory and power of God. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible explains. And where we have just read now, Ephesians chapter 2, when we look at verses 11 and 12, we see that in the past, we were Gentiles, according to the flesh, and uncircumcised, and we were without Christ. We were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. I want you to note this. You belong to a class called uh, Gentiles. You belong to the class that we call uncircumcised. Circumcision was, you know, a covenant between God's people and God. And so you were not in that covenant. And that is why the Bible says we were without Christ and we became aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. And we were strangers from the covenant of God's promise. We had no hope and we were without God in the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. You and I were outside God's covenant promise. You and I were without hope in this world. But God sent hope to us. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. We were far off. But now God has drawn us closer and made us sense. Oh, you look as if you've never committed any sin. It is the grace of God by his blood. Oh, you now belong to the household of God. And you are now close to our Lord Jesus Christ by his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, we've talked at length on redemption through the blood of Jesus and how God had drawn you that were past in sin, past and alien to the commonwealth of Israel, past sinners, past without God's hope and covenant. And now, number two, access to the Holy of Holies. The efficacy of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so effective that it gives you access to the Holy of Holies. Remember the story of Uzzah? When the ark was coming out from uh, the Philistines and they were taking it to the city of David, and Uzzah wanted to, you know, help the ark because the ark was on a cart and it tilted. And what happened? God smote him. Why? He wasn't allowed to touch the ark. He was not a Levite by any standard. He was not holy enough to touch the ark of God. But today, no matter how bad you've been, after the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all unrighteousness and has redeemed you, today you can assess 
the holy of holies. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. The Bible says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now verses 11 and 12 of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, 11 and 12 says, But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come. Hallelujah. With the greater and a more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Now, let us look down and see what he did there. The Bible says, he gave us access to eternal redemption by the shedding of his blood. What an amazing love. He shed his blood, he tore his flesh so that you and I can pass through him and enter into the holy of holiest, the most holy place of the most high God. Number three, I'm sure you should be very excited by now. By the blood of Jesus, we have authority over principalities and over powers. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 13. The Bible says, And you being dead in your sins, hallelujah, and uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, that is, he has made you alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. I don't know whether you, you, you listen well in that Bible portion. We were dead in sin, smelly, unqualified, uncircumcised, not qualified for the kingdom of God. But God, Jesus came to quicken us by his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. He rolled away our sin. He covered it with his blood. And we that were stinking and stinking and smelly, he made us clean and clean and clean before the Father. Glory be to God in the highest. And the Bible says, And having wiped out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, because they were ordinances written, Oh, Mrs. Sinkana, you did this, you did this, you did this. They were ordinances. Oh, Sister A, you did this, you did this, you did that. Contrary to us, to condemn us, to make sure that we are doomed. And he has taken it out of the way and nailed it on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the greatest sacrifice that Jesus has done. He said, oh, he's no longer my daughter that have seen. He's no longer my son. I stand on their behalf. And daily, the Bible says he's pleading for mercy before the Father for you and I. What a glorious God. And so you can imagine how much power you have. And verse 6, 15, verse 15 of that Colossians chapter 2 says what? And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He made a show of them, triumphing over them in it. Praise the Lord. The glory of God is faithful. The glorious glory of God is upon us. He spoiled the powers and principalities that were too strong for us. And then he made a show of them and said, I have given you victory, victory, victory for you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move to the book of Ephesians and let's look at verse 6 of chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 6. The Bible says, and had raised us up together. Hallelujah. Amen. When Christ died and you believe in him, he raised you up together with him. And he made you to sit together with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. What a promotion. This is the word of God. And then let's go back a little bit to Ephesians chapter 1. 
And let's look at verses 19 and 20 to 22. Ephesians 1, 19 down to 22. And God said, And what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Are you a believer? Towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Hallelujah. Amen. So no matter the name, of the new cult, the name of the new society they are calling on you. He says, even those that are yet to come, he has given us victory by moving us to sit in heavenly places, in power, in might, in dominion. Praise the Lord. That is the work that Jesus has done for you and I. I don't know how excited you are. I know that God is touching somebody's heart like he's really, really enlightening my heart today on his word. Number four point. Through the blood we receive power to heal and to perform miracles. The blood of Jesus has done great things for us. I did say that number one is that through the blood we have redemption in Christ Jesus. Number two, we have access to the Holy of Holies. And number three, we have power, dominion over principalities and powers. And number four, through the blood we receive power to heal and to perform miracles. He said, go into all the world, heal the sick in my name, and this sign shall follow you that believe. You shall cast out devils and you shall speak in new tongues. Praise the Lord. This is the glory of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. God is a faithful God and I know that he's doing something new in your life like he's doing in my life today. I don't know what you're doing but I know that the, the disciples went forward and they were preaching everywhere and God was walking with them and confirming his word with signs and wonders. There were signs and wonders following them. And number five, through the blood of Jesus, we have fellowship with the Father. Now before we get to number five, how many of you want signs and wonders to follow you? You must move from your comfort zone and go to the lost world. The world is lost when we look at the world today. God, they are lost. They lack the knowledge of God. They are going the way of the world. They are doing the things of the world. But Jesus has come that you and I might have life and have it in abundance. Please share this gospel with someone. Tell someone to awake from your sleep, O slumber. Awake, awake, awake from your slumber, O ye that sleepers. God is calling you. Even if the blind man, even a toddler, knows that the world is no longer the same as before. Jesus said, when you begin to see things not the way it used to be, know that my coming is very near. How prepared are you? Number five points and the final point we'll be looking at together is that through the blood we have fellowship with the Father. Jesus has made it easy for us. We don't need to go for someone to pray for you to have access to God. When you believe in, the, in God and, and have the blood of Jesus in your life atoning for you, you can assess your Heavenly Father in fellowship after all you are a member of his household. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, we look at verses 15 and 24 to 26. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of 
eternal inheritance. Jesus is the cause. He is the mediator of the New Testament because by his death, he is building us up by redeeming our souls from sin and rescuing us from the First Testament so that we might receive our eternal inheritance in heaven. This is the assessment. This is the fellowship that we can now have with God the Father because there is a mediator of the New Testament that have abolished the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then when we look at verse 24 of that same Hebrews chapter 9, we see that for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. That was the figure. The Bible calls it which, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, in the past, the chief priest would go in there and then it was a tabernacle made by hand. But today, Jesus abolished all of that. Today, the Bible says he goes straight into heaven, into the presence of God, and he's appealing for you and I. He's right there, seated in heavenly places, pleading for mercy. Oh, mercy for Sarah. Mercy for Sister S. Mercy for Sister A. Mercy for Brother B. Oh, God, have mercy upon your children. Ah, my blood, I shed for them. That is what Jesus is doing for you and I on daily basis now. Praise the Lord. And then we look down and verse, verse 26. For then must he offer, okay, let's start from 25 so we can understand it better. The Bible says, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. He was using blood of bull, blood of this, and he would say, oh, this blood, I sprinkle it on the, your children. The blood atones for them. That's what the high priest was doing. But the Bible says, in verse 26, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world had he appeared, Jesus had appeared at the end of this world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He himself appeared and sacrificed himself so that all this sacrifice of bulls and goods that was not able to cleanse us from sin will end. That is the mystery of the death of Jesus Christ. And as it is appointed unto man, verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Dearly beloved, whether you like it or not, Death is around the corner. Pandemic is all over the world. You may escape pandemic. You cannot escape the wrath of God. Hebrews chapter 10, as we round up, verse 9 and 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, the will of God. He taken away the first, that he may establish the second. By the will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ, Jesus once for all. You and I are justified and sanctified by the singular offering that Christ did at the cross of Calvary. He said, lo, I come to do the will of God, to take away the first testament, and establish the second testament that you and I will stand justified. May God have mercy on us all. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Are you among those justified by this blood? Are you sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ? Will you be in the number saved by the blood of Jesus? The grace is available in the house tonight. If yes, then you must be reconciled to him by confessing your sins and returning to him. 
Remember Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. It's not the physical death. It's eternal death. And the sister said she died. She went to hell. Oh, the pain was unbearable. And she was just begging for another chance. Dearly beloved, you may not be that fortunate like that sister. There may be no other chance than now. There was a colleague of mine, I always see share this in high school when I was doing A levels. And then I told him about Christ. And he said, Oh no, I'm still young. When I grow old, I will remember God. Let me enjoy my life small. For our youth listening to me, there is no time. The time is now to repent. The Bible is calling you that you must repent and return to your Mecca. Any time may be your turn. That young man did not leave. That semester he died. He was sitting down in the sitting room of his senior brother's house, reading a newspaper, and he slumped. And that was the end of him. His own rapture took place. It may be your turn. Your rapture may be tonight. You cannot tell. But I want to assure you that as you bend down your head today and say, God, I'm sorry. I, I take in the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive the redemption through the blood of Jesus. And this blood that has atoned for many sins can also atone for my sin. My dear brother, my sister, you don't have the time. If you are in the house and you want to surrender your life to Christ, you want to tell God you're sorry, you want to tell God I want to start a new life today, there is so much on the table tonight for you to receive God. I pray with you tonight and I say, Father, as many, O King of glory, as are turning back, O God Almighty, turning their back, against the world and facing the cross and saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't know the way. Now I have heard the word of truth. I am returning to you. Lord, have mercy on me. Father, as many as are pleading their cases before you tonight, I join my faith with yours, O God Almighty, and I plead for mercy on their behalf. Please, Lord, accept them back. Take them back, O oh God, as a return. The Bible says the prodigal son returned. The father said, oh, but give him water to wash. Give him a new royal cloth to put on. Oh, keep food on the table for him. Father, I know that there will be angels celebrating the returning home of the prodigal son tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Lord and our God, Father, we thank you. Your word has gone forth, O God. It will not return unto you void. It will accomplish its purpose, O God. As many as are listening, as many as will listen after now, Father, let the word have meaning in their lives. Let the word, O God, enter, O God, into their hearts. And Father, Lord, turn around their situations for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.